Hello everyone, I'm Bibi. Welcome back to my personal off-camera custom Sims 2 neighborhood. This is Falarine. In my previous video, I covered the basics of how I set up and play with original characters, but I promise to show you in more detail how I create lore and hopefully give you ideas and inspiration for your own gameplay. I'm going to mix in storytelling with some building here, some Sims makeovers, and I'll share links to fall themes, custom content, and mods that I've been secretly collecting for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this mini series and stick around for the whole journey. In today's episode, we're in the farming area, right at the outskirts of Falorain, to visit a family that has chosen to walk away from the noise and gossip of the inner city and start a new beginning in a more humble way. This is the Falora family. Yes, the surname ties into the name of the city, because I'm already setting up a story that will make more sense after three to four generations. And this is something you can do in your custom hood. For example, when you place down lots, they need an address and you can name a street after your founding sims so that they will live on as part of the history of your city. But anyhow, the Falora family lives in this lovely refurbished barn house thing. I don't know. <laughs> the main building here at the center was actually a barn and over time the previous owner set up a few extensions. The building itself was left unused for a while until it was sold to the Falora family for very cheap and with the modest funds they had, they managed to reconstruct it into a large family home. What I want to do today while telling you their story is to decorate their dining room and their home entrance with some fall themed clutter. I'm in the Halloween spirit, so that's what we'll be doing this month. And then I want to dress the family in cozy new clothes for the fall weather so I can set up a photo shoot and take some pictures to decorate the house with. If you like the clothes I'm using, I'll leave a link in the description to a Pinterest board I've created. If you want to grab some cute custom content for autumn, go and check that link out. So let's jump into the mini time lapse. While while I share their story with you, sit back and relax, this is your Sims 2 podcast of the day. The head of the family is Luca Falore. If you saw my previous video, you might remember him as one of my hood founders, one of the first 12 sims I created and moved into this little town. Luca is now an elder, but I play with the double lifespan in this hood to spend more time with my original sims, so he still has a bit of time left to set up the ranch for his children who will inherit the place. And speaking of children, he has a lot of them. Luca is a family sim, and so is his wife Christina, and the two have been very, very busy popping babies non-stop. Actually, let's take a look at his family tree so you can see what I mean. Bam, how's that looking? Right off the bat, you might notice that Luca's eldest child is actually from before he was with Christina, but it's not from a previous relationship. That's a very interesting story in and of itself, which I'll cover when I get to his family. But Christina and Luca together, they have six children so far. They had a set of twins, Enzo and Benito, and then they had another set of twins, Lucia, yes, I do like that name, and Isaac, and then their daughter Sienna is the most recent addition to the family. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, not again two family sims overpopulating the hood, but you'll see why this actually makes sense in the lore, in particular for Christina. Okay, so as I said, Luca is one of our hood founders. Because he's a family sim, I assume that he'll quickly fall in love with a townie or another one of my playables, roll the one to get married and get busy with making babies. However, he turned out quite different for most of his life. See, Luca is a kind and shy sim, he's a cancer, he's a very sweet and nurturing guy. However, he's had mostly unrealistic expectations of who his ideal partner is. He's dated people on and off, but he never really clicked with anyone seriously. He used to work in the medical field, and as we all know, that's a really high pressure career track, so he didn't have too much time to work on finding love. After moving out of his starter apartment, he bought a small cheap house near the industrial zone of the city where he adopted a cat named Rascal, and the two lived happily together. During that time in his life, he made a big life-changing favor to one of his best friends, Thao, which I'll reveal when we get to playing her household. Luca continued to work hard over the years, and eventually he became a surgeon. Now, as a surgeon, he was really well paid, so that garnered the attention of Regina Gomez, a single mother and fortune sim who had recently purchased a property right next door. The two hit it off and started a romance and even became engaged at one point, so it was getting serious. Now, I have to mention that Regina Gomez has a very, very messy life, okay? 
and I was praying that she's finally going to calm down and settle with a kind family man like Luca. Unfortunately, he wasn't rich enough for her and she broke up their engagement to continue her decade-long affair with a man who is the biggest menace to society here in Falarine. But Luca wasn't too heartbroken about the situation because Regina's infidelity completely erased any love he felt for her. So he moved on with his life and continued living as a bachelor until he reconnected with Christina, who he already knew because she is Regina's oldest daughter. Yes, you heard that correctly. He married his ex fiance's daughter. No words. I mean, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. That was a mess. But here's what happened. Christina is the firstborn sim I had in Falarine, so she's the eldest sim of Generation 2. She's nearing elderhood at this point, however, she's still the sim's equivalent of like 25 years younger than Luca, so that's still like an age gap that's raising several eyebrows, like I'm side-eyeing this entire situation. But what you have to understand is that Christina had a very difficult upbringing. Her mother Regina was a mess, as I said earlier, they were very broke. Regina was not good with money despite starting out well. The family moved home several times, almost got evicted by a landlord, got the repo man. Regina's love life was troubling the kids because they never had a solid father figure at home. Most tragically, just when things were starting to look up, one of Christina's youngest siblings suddenly passed away. This happened when Christina was still a young teen, but as you can see from her current wants, she's still mourning her sister Marina and wishes to somehow bring her back. Now, I'm sharing all of this to give you an example of why I don't use aspiration calculators in my game. If I were to use one of those tools, Christina, who was a Leo, would probably be a popularity sim or something like that, but the way I decide the aspirations of my sims who are born in-game is simply by observing their life. Christina has had such a turbulent upbringing and I pictured her as someone who wants to heal that generational trauma. She doesn't want to repeat the mistakes her mom made, she doesn't want to live a life of chasing money or raise her own kids in chaos. Growing up, all she ever wanted to see was her family happily together, connected, finally together in a solid family unit, so naturally she has the family aspiration. And this is why I don't rely just on wants-based gameplay and calculators and things like that. Back to the story, Luca and Regina broke off their engagement while Christina was in college, so she wasn't really involved in this entire situation. When she eventually came back from college and started working, she met up with Luca again, too caught up, and after a few sim years, they ended up falling in love. Initially, they bought a nice suburban home, but they quickly outgrew it when their second pair of twins were born. Christina wanted to quit her job in the education career Career to be a stay-at-home mom. Meanwhile, Luca was nearing retirement and he knew he wanted to purchase a larger home for his growing family, so basically everything at that point in life led them to where they're at today. Christina has always been a green thumb, it's her main hobby, she has a gold gardening badge, and here at the farmhouse they have all of this land to grow their own fruits and veggies. I also imagine that they own some of the farmland that is surrounding the area, and she loves doing that, she's incredibly happy with tending to her garden. They also have this small side building which actually operates as the family business. This is currently their primary source of income, alongside Luca's decent pension money from his career as a surgeon. In the store, they sell produce, saplings, fertilizers, compost, seeds, and so on. Obviously, they're not a very rich family, they don't have much to be honest, but they're still incredibly happy or at least some of them. See, the two oldest twins, Enzo and Benito, feel quite differently about the countryside life. Enzo is already shaping up to be the main heir to the family, the one who will continue taking care of the farmhouse when his dad inevitably passes away. And he's taking his role quite seriously. He's a family sim, so he's staying loyal to what his old man wants, and so he's usually working hard at the shop, restocking, helping clients, ringing up customers. He's been doing a lot of the managerial work, to be honest, especially because his mom is pregnant like 90% of the time, <laughs> and his dad is getting a bit too old to be carrying heavy inventory. So yes, Enzo has embraced this purpose, and he's feeling very driven about it. His twin brother Benito, on the other hand, is counting the days until he can go to college or move out on his own. He's picked up his mom's music and dance talents and he's happily using his dad's reconstructed car to go to his after-school job or meet up with friends for some dancing and karaoke downtown. He's got the teenage angst against his parents for moving them out of the suburbs, away from civilization as he likes to say, and now he's just feeling a little bit stuck here in life surrounded by nothing but fields and no other sims. 
So these are the two oldest boys. They want very different things in life, but they're not enemies like Angela and Lilith Pleasant, for example. They're not fighting, they're not actually arguing with their parents, but they just have more complex feelings about the family situation and future plans. Lucia and Isaac, who are the younger pair of siblings, have yet to show more of their personality. What I can tell you about them so far is that Lucia is a bit of a tomboy, she's quite active, she's sporty, she's taller than her brother too, so she's always winning at basketball so far. Isaac is a bit nerdy, his hobby is science, he's more quiet, but he's not bringing classmates home as frequently as his sister does. I've yet to see and decide how they'll play along with the long-running family dynamic, and I can say the same for little Sienna, who's still just a toddler. One thing I can note, however, is that the younger children are a bit distressed at times. Their aspiration meter is lower than ideal. The thing is that despite Christina's best efforts, it's quite difficult to properly pay equal attention to household duties, a business, and six children. And that's why there's a bit of a hint of the younger ones feeling like they're not getting enough attention. The family also isn't financially that well off, so there aren't that many activities, toys, and things for the kids to do and keep themselves occupied. So yes, this is basically the lore of the Falora family up until this point in time. I wouldn't be surprised if they have at least one more kid, because Christina still has a bit of time to go until she becomes an elder. All of her pregnancies were not initiated by me. This is the result of Autonomous Try for Baby and Risky Woohoo, which I've tuned to a low percentage, but this is what happens when a sim has super fertility. As you can tell, even though on the surface this is a very wholesome family, nothing is ever really perfect, at least that's how I like creating stories in my game. Life isn't simple and it's not black and white either, and I think this makes for more unique outcomes and character arcs, because nobody is flawless. Even the kindest sims have made mistakes in the past, they're not always on the right side of the moral argument, and they have a lot to learn, they often have enemies or maybe don't have stellar reputation. So if you're struggling and getting bored because you're always trying to create the perfect life for your sims and fulfill their wants so nothing ever really challenges you in your gameplay, try to approach things in this more nuanced sort of way. It's fun to play out story arcs that aren't exactly pure perfection, and it's okay to sometimes just unpause the game and witness free will at play. You can also interpret their fears too, or even try to fulfill them if you want to cause some chaos. For this family, I could have just let both of the adult sims keep their high paying jobs so that we have a lot of money and live in a smaller home, but I decided I'll challenge myself with starting a home business and playing out this country life for them. They're more of a traditional family too, which is not what I typically do with my families. Going against the grain of what you're used to is another good gameplay idea to bring in some variety in your hoods. I I prefer playing matrilineal families, focusing on female sims. Listen, I just love the girlies. But I chose to do something which might seem common, but it's unusual for my style of gameplay and it's something different that challenged me. And that's the approach I've applied to other families too. You'll see in my upcoming videos that there's one household here in particular that leads a very unconventional lifestyle in so many ways and it's incredibly great fun. So let me know what you think about these gameplay ideas and share in the comments if you have any tips of your own. I'd love to hear that. Stay tuned for more story-based gameplay ideas and custom hood inspiration. I'll be sharing more lore and custom content links with you very, very soon. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because I'll see you really soon with another Sims 2 video. Take care and bye for now.